Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We sit them down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to make a tempting cash offer on the table today. 60. I think you're getting close. I think I'm very close, actually. The alternative is simple. Place the same goods into a local auction. I will be on hand at all times to help and advise. Today, the show comes to you from Clandidno in North Wales. There's a great crowd of people here. They brought along their treasures. They are determined to do business. You know why? They want to walk away with the real deal. So, who will have what it takes to get the real deal? Well, over at Stuart's table, our first seller is hoping she can make the cut. Nicely engraved pair of scissors. You're going to tell me they're grape scissors, aren't you? Well, I am, actually, but then <laughs> I would bow to your superior knowledge. Well, they are a lovely pair of scissors. They look like silver, are they? Yes, they're silver. Nice, clear hallmarks, English. Hallmarks, London, late 19th century. Solid silver, always nice. I mean, most of the grape scissors you see are silver plate or nickel plate, mm -hmm. Sheffield plate, but it's nice to have silver ones, very nicely engraved. Grape scissors normally grip the grape mm. when you cut them off the bun. So you've got a bunch of grape in the fruit bowl, mm. you cut the grape off and it takes it to your plate. There's a little tiny upstand which is designed to hold it as you bring it over. Mm. Those don't do it. No. Now, I don't mean that they're not grape scissors because the whole shape of them, it, Mm. Is exactly that. But that's strange. That's I wouldn't mind betting because that's something else. Well be whatever they are, enough, yes. it would make them more interesting than great scissors. Mm. But uh, but lovely quality, lovely silver. Looks like ivy leaves and so on in the engraving. Tell me about them. What, what have you had them long? Is it something um, you've... Oh my husband bought them probably 10, 12 years ago, came in and said I bought you a present. I thought, does it sparkle? He bought himself some grape scissors. Ah. <laughs> A sense so, a note of disappointment there. <laughs> well, it was a bit, because I had to clean them. Uh, you no. wanted diamonds and things like Something that. Something like that, yes. No, he loved them, so... Um... So, I'll have a go at buying them if I may. OK. <clears throat> now, these are not going to be a snip, are they? I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. Mm hmm. A bit more, please? David likes them, I bet. <laughs> well, they do, and I've been thinking very carefully, Stuart, about everything you said. Are they for something else, I wonder? Just by the sheer size of them, I don't think they are for needlework or no, trimming. No, no. So I think they probably are for fruit anyway, and probably, more likely, grapes. What I can tell you, the independent valuers and auctioneers, they say 60 to 90. There's a nice little bit of engraving on there. The hallmarks says, I think, 1896 or 97. Yep. Yep. So London. they're quality, but I can see nothing wrong with the offer that's on the table. Oh, <coughs> thank you, you David. <coughs> what do you think? A little bit more and we've got a deal. A little bit more and we've got a deal. Mm. 90 pounds. That's fine. We have a deal? We have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Jill is happy with a little bit more. Can our next seller put the squeeze on John for a little figure yeah, she's looked John. after for many years? And um, we've got a little coal painted bronze here. What That's do you right. know about it? Well, I don't know an awful lot about it. I've just didn't been inherited. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I'd bring it along and see Have what you had it for a long time or? About 55 years. Oh, it's quite yeah. so. Quite a substantial it's amount of time. From like a father-in-law. Oh right. Do you know where he got it? I mean, did, did he travel? No, he was the um, manager of a depository. Oh right. And uh, used to just pick up little things and then take them home if they were yes. damaged. Yes. Well, actually, what it is is what we call cold painted bronze, mm -hmm. and it's probably German. It, it purports to be by somebody called Bergman who was a very famous yes, producer of cold painted bronze. He did pheasants, he did little animals, all sorts of things. And you know, his, his stuff can make quite a lot of money. Yes. 
Um, personally, I don't think this is by him. It would be, no, it would be signed, and they, or he would have his mark on it. And I can't see any evidence of that. Also, it's not quite the quality. You know, if you look at it, it's just... It, you get that sort of little slight crispness that yes, just takes yeah. it away, which often the people copying. Um, the colours are not as bright as often they are no, with Bergen no. stuff, which I think is another no. another thing. And I think the feature I do like, actually, is this, you can see here, that little the fold, fold, the fold yes. in the carpet. Yes, it is. It's very lovely, good. Yes, really yes, nice. Yeah. Well, I'm you're not going to tell me how much you want for it, or...? I'm not, no. <laughs> no, right. Let's say 20, 40, 50 pounds. How does that appeal to you? Doesn't. It doesn't appeal to you? No. I thought that was quite a good offer. Let me swap the 10 pound note for another 20. So we've got 60 pounds. No. Not tempting? No, sorry. It's getting warm, lukewarm. Cool. Right. Now, this is positively my final offer. £80. And that's me done. That's, that's what it's worth to me. Ah, ah. Now, I've had a good look at this, Audrey. Now, when it was first brought in, uh, some of our independent valuers, or one in particular, thought that it was Austrian, which it is, but thought it was the work of Bergman. Sadly, that's not Bergman. And £80 is a fair and good offer. So I'm going to say, take it home, get yourself a nice bottle of wine or something like that, and have a party. Thank you. <laughs> Audrey, you've heard the words from the maestro. How do you feel? It's a deal. It's a deal. It's a deal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Enjoy the money. I will. So Audrey gets to have her knees up. Dunno. Next on Corrie's table, a Victorian scholar, immortalised for 150 years and now up for sale. How did you come by it, Gwenda? Well, there was a house clearance uh, not far from here and um, it was there and I took quite a fancy to that. Well, let's have a look at him. Let's turn him round to me. And you're right, very distinguished. Handsome mm. man. Mm. Let's see who he is. He's James Bauer Harrison, lecturer in anatomy, Chatham Street School of Medicine, Manchester, 1850. So you're right, he is old. And this image is what they call a daguerreotype, which is an early form of photographic process done in a studio because of a long time of exposure. So he had to sit very still for quite a while. There's some writing on the back. And let's have a look at it. This likeness taken April 4th, 1848. Mm. So we've got a date on the front, 1850, mm. and a date on the back, 1848. 1848 yeah. And this inscription are in the original backing parts of which are still present under the fresh backing, February 1954. So somebody's rebacked it or reframed yes. it in yeah. February 1954. But the frame is not 1954. This is an early Victorian frame. Yes. And he's been popped in in the 50s. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, he's in very bad condition. Mm. The image is flaking. You can mm. see it's faded round the corners. And this sort of dusty look is where it's coming adrift. So with that in mind, let's put some money on the table and see if I can tempt you to part with him. Mm -hmm. So you put 20. 30, and that's in light of the condition. No. 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 That's no. a definite no, definite, isn't it? it? Not a matter. That's a no, or else you're a really good poker player. <laughs> I'm not really prepared to offer a lot more. Mm. So I'm going to put another five on the table. You've got 35 there. Mm. And you're still going to say no, aren't you? I can yes. see it in your face. <laughs> <laughs> There's 35 on the table and you're not going it's not going to be enough, is it? No. No. Well, first of all, Gwenda. What an unusual name. A uh, Welsh name. A Welsh name. You should know that. My wife's Welsh. Yeah. OK. Um, how much is on the table? 35. Embarrassingly. 
35. 35. Do I get the impression that you don't care for this item? Well, he's handsome. Normally, you're not aware who they are. The nice thing about this example is he was a prominent medical man of his time, yes. and we know who he is. And because of that, the independent valuers have put an estimation around about 140 or 160 on this. If it went to auction, there are collectors of these items and they might come out to play. Mm. So I think we've got to say, definitely not on this occasion, Corey. Put that back in your purse. We are going to auction and we are hoping that we will find a collector. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> well, I take it you're going to take it to auction. Yes. And I wish you the very, very best Thank of luck. Thank you very much. I hope you do really well. So do I. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Is there eight again now, then? The condition put Corey off, but how will this handsome chap fare under the gavel of auctioneer Simon Bauer? Now, you brought along on the dealer's day... Yes. ..an interesting item, a Degura type. It's a photographic process, one of the early photographic processes. What did you pay for the Degura type? Can you remember? Yes, uh, I paid £5. Pounds. OK. Seems a, a very reasonable and a very good buy. Yeah. It's coming up now. There's a reserve of £100. Pounds. Is it going to make it? Well, let's find out. At £60, pounds I'm bid. For the Degura type, at £60, bid five. 70 with me at 75. It's at 70, 75, 80. 80, 80 and bid for the Gera type at 80. 85, 95, 95 bid, 100, 100. We're at 100, we're at the reserve. Uh, yeah, that's great. At 100 pounds, is there 10 again quickly? At 100 pounds and off then. Gamble's gone down at 100 quid. We've got 10% commission to take off. I make that 90 pounds. What's your first reaction? Great, great. Happy? Very pleased, yes. yes. Satisfied? Very, yes, yes. On the day, Gwenda's item, which she paid a fiver for, she gambled and put it into auction. It brought £100 under the gavel. Take away the commission and she's going home with 90 quid. And that is the real deal. Coming up. And actually, I really like it. And if it was me, I'd wear it. So can Corrie offer enough to gain a new accessory? I think I'm very close, actually. Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Landudno. People flock here for the dramatic coastal views, but today they've gathered to see what drama will unfold in our dealer's den as Simon sizes up his stylish heirloom. John, you've bought in this pocket watch and Albert chain. Yeah. Perhaps you can tell me how come you've got it today. Well, it came um, originally, it was my grand, great grandfather's, and then it went to my grandfather, and then it uh, went to my mother, well, my father, and then he passed away and it came to me, so I've had it for 20 years now. It's just been kept in the drawer, so I think it's time to... Time to let it go. go but, yeah. um, this is actually quite a nice example of, of what they call a half hunter. Mm. Uh, that's to say that it's not fully enclosed like a hunter uh, pocket watch, but a half hunter, you've got the glass aperture there and then the, the um, figures around the outside, so you could actually see the time without having to open the pocket watch. This one's retailed by quite a good maker as well, Benson. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard of them before, but they mm -hmm. were good watchmakers in their own right. This has actually got continental hallmarks for 18 karat rather than English marks, mm -hmm. but that doesn't really... It's still 18 karat gold. Yeah. What you've got with the Albert chain, however, is a 9 karat gold Albert, which is marked on every link. And at the end of this, we've got a little bob with um, a bloodstone in it. And this, of course, would have been worn across the waistcoat, dangling down. It's so quite an elegant thing that a gentleman would have worn, you know, sort of quite popular right up to yeah. sort of the 1930s. Well, my grandfather really. wore it while well, he was alive every day. He used to have it on, you know. Um, nowadays, of course, the price of this is very much dictated by one thing, and it's something you hear a lot of all the time, is, of course, the gold value. Mm. Um, because the price of gold has been so high recently, we really have to assess the value of the chain and the watch by the quantity of gold that it contains. John, I think a fair offer would be for both the Albert chain and the watch would be if I was to offer you 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300 pounds. No, I think it's worth more than that. Let's see what David's opinion is. Well, uh, I've just heard what our dealer has said and 
Simon is quite right, it's all right for an opening offer. What I can tell you is that our independent valuers and auctioneers, they valued this round about 450 to 5, but on saying that, there is somewhere around £650 worth of scrap, but we do need substantially more than that. Simon's always fair. Come on, Simon, get your money in. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you for that information, David. Um, now David said what the weights are and things like that, I can see that is definitely not enough of an offer, John. And what I would like to do, I'd like to raise that to £450. Um, I think that is now a very fair offer for the watch and chain. Can we squeeze another 50? It's quite hard because... Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. How about if I put down another 20? That's £470. Can't squeeze any more. Another tenner? Another tenner. Look, now you're getting very, very near. <laughs> There's not a lot left for me now, but we've got 480 quid there. Mm. Take my money, John, before I change my mind. Right. Thank you very much for coming in. It's a deal. Now, from vintage timepieces to timeless landscapes. A nice pair of watercolours. I don't know the artist, but he's obviously signed them and he's dated them, 1880. Can you and tell me a bit about they're local. The... They're just past Carnarvon, the, the area that they um, have been painted. So these, these scenes are local scenes, yes, as you're are. saying. And yes. he, therefore, Herring presumably, boats. he's a local artist as well. I don't know that. Ah. I don't know that, but um, I bought these on Anglesey about 25 years ago and they were badly watermarked. Right. I bought the pair. So I kept them a few years and then I took them and had them restored by um, a reputable restorer. So he didn't come cheap or, or they didn't, didn't come cheap then, I bet. It was very expensive to mm. have them done. So, but I thought, well, it were worth it. Mm. I must confess, the fact that they've been fully restored and that they've got new frames on them, um, tends to t kind of put me off them a bit. Yes. Uh, because I know they would have cost you serious money for the restoration, and I'd much rather they were in, in good old frames, and I would have gone to the trouble of finding a nice pair of old frames, personally, rather than putting them in new frames. That could still be done, of course. OK, I'll, I'll try and buy them, because I think they are, they are pretty. I do like them. Yes. Um, right. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140 pounds. I bet that's still a fair way from your uh, restoration cost. Oh yes, but I, I realise that uh, I wouldn't get anything like the restoration cost. But I thought I would get more for a pair than, yeah, than that. Than that. So the choice is £140, I think, or off to auction? I think I'll send them to auction. So I wish you well at auction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lot 80. So can Gillian recoup some money at auction on these fully restored watercolours? On the dealer's day, you brought along a pair of watercolours uh, of Carnarvonshire coastal views. Yes. Do you remember what you paid for them 30 years ago? Yes, they were in a very shocking state, and I paid £100 for the pair. OK. So you paid £100. Quid. Do you remember what you spent on them, refurbishing them, reframing them? Um, on refurbishing and reframing, I spent £700. 700? Yes. 700 Yes. So they've actually cost you... £800. £800? Pounds. Yeah. Quite a lot of money. You turned down 140 from our dealer. They're here with a £200 reserve. Very modest. Let's see what they bring. For the pair, I have 120 to start at 120. For the pair, 120, 130, 140, 150. They're at 150, 160. They're climbing up to the, to the reserve of 200. 170 bid. Is there 80 now, then? At 170 bid. I'll like 80. For the pair... They've stopped at 170. 170 quickly. At 170 and off then, can't do those very sorry. They stopped at 170, they didn't get up to the 200 reserve. I think a beautiful job has been done of them. It would be a crime to see them sold at 170 quid. Take them home. I will. 
I'll put, put them on my wall now. Put them back on the wall. Every time you look at them and say, the Duke says he likes those, we don't care they didn't sell. That's the real deal. Now let's join Corrie, who might make a good offer if she works out what this is. Is it a dagger or is it a brooch? I think it's a brooch. It's I brooch. don't think I could actually... Kill well, anybody with no, that? No, I could hurt them, though. Yeah, you could. That's a really <laughs> lethal pin. Let's have a look at it. And where did you get it? I got it from a great aunt, ooh, 40, 50 years ago. And do you wear it? Never. Never? Never. <laughs> So you brought along here to get some cash. To get some cash. To get for some it, cash. Yes. Let's be direct yes, on this. To yeah, get you're here to get some money. Well, let's have a little look at it. And and actually, I really like it. And if it was me, I'd wear it. It's Scottish, and it was made at the end of the 19th century. And I, I don't know whether you're familiar with the story of Queen Victoria and her love affair with Balmoral and all things Scottish. Mm. And so she made Scottish items very, very fashionable, very popular. Well, one of the things is these Scottish dirks. And the stones, they're not precious stones, they're just what they call cairngorms or polished Scottish stones, probably set in silver, and at the time would have been worn with a tartan shawl or something like that. So very, very much to do with this late 19th century regard for all things Scottish. Nicely made. And it's got a ferocious pin, and that yes. makes me think it was probably for a plaid or, or a tartan of some description yes. to fasten it. But I really like it. Good. So, um, so we're going to put some money on the table, are we? Well, good start. Let's start. OK, let's have a good start. A good start. Right. 20. 40. 60. I think you're getting close. I think I'm very close, actually. Well, perhaps we could go a bit higher. Or we could go a little bit higher, but I'm really at the end now. I'm at the end okay, of... Okay, well... Well, I'll put okay. 10 on. Okay. So you've got 70 there. 70. I think that's a fair deal. So we have a deal at 70? Yes, we do. Thank you very much for bringing it along. <laughs> Coming up, a monkey in a top hat. Well, here we go. See if I can tempt you. Right. John's keen. We're we getting warm. The ice is melted. The ice is melted, right. Will John heat things up and seal this deal? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Our dealers have been busy and have all got one item in the bag. So will Simon be the first to secure deal number two? Now, Helen, you've brought in this screen. What can you yes. tell me about this nice bit of stained glass you've got? Well, we bought it at Busa about five years ago. We just liked the look of it and it went well in the house that we had before. Now we've moved, it doesn't go with the fireplace, basically. So you actually did use this as a fire screen? Yes. Right. Well, it's a, it's a pretty piece of stained glass. I'm not sure it originally started off life in this particular frame. It, no. So it looks to me like, you know you get Victorian homes with like stained glass windows in the doors and things like that? Yes. I'm wondering if it might have been something like that originally, and someone sort of changed the house over, changed the door, and didn't want to waste a bit of glass, because it is a nice bit of glass, and they sort of mounted it as a fire screen. I have to say it's quite effective because once you get a light behind it, it really brings yeah. out all the, all the colours in it. The only problem I've got with this is there are a few little bits of damage to it. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a few cracks in a, in, in a, in a couple of bits of glass. There's a, quite a bad one there on that piece. Yeah. And, and there's another one there. Right, so when you originally bought this in the car boot cell, can you remember what you paid for it? I'm not telling you You're that. not telling me. <laughs> no. I don't blame you. I wouldn't tell me either. But I'm going to make you an offer. I hope it shows you a profit on what you paid for it. I am going to offer you the princely sum of £30. Can you do a little bit more? I'm going to stick to my guns on this one because I'm not quite sure what I, you know, whether I'll be able to sell it with that damage on. That's the thing that really concerns me is, is these cracks. So um, it's entirely your choice. Can I ask my husband? Of course you can ask yeah. your husband. Where's and hubby? There he is. <laughs> Hello, hubby. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Andy? You want more, do you? Yeah? So Andy wants more than 30. I can't say I blame you, Andy. 
I think possibly, Helen, your, the best route for you today might be for you to try this in auction. OK. Are then. you quite happy to do that? I'm quite happy, Andy. Yes, right. yeah. Well, I wish you both the best of luck with it. I hope you do very well in auction. And thank you very much for bringing it in today. Thank you very nice much, Nice to have indeed. met you. Thank I you. I must just ask you quickly, now we know where it's going to auction, how much did you pay for it at the booty? 45. 45? Oh, yes. so not everything's that cheap at car boots. Then, no, is it? it isn't, yeah. no. Will Helen beat the car boot price at auction? You turn down 30, it might be worth a bit more. How confident are you? Well, see how we get on. <laughs> I think it's a toss of a coin. Yeah. It could go either way. It's here now. Is it going to bring more than 30 here? Let's find out. And straight in at £30 and bid. At £30 bid, at 30 bid, 5, 40. 40. 50. More than you paid now. 55, 55, 55. I'll take 60 now. Where's the 60? Hammer's up then, you're all done. At 55 and away then. 55. 55 pounds. You've got to take the commission off, which is about 10%. So it's about 49 pounds. You paid 45. How many, a little bit of profit, didn't I? How many years ago? <laughs> about six, seven years ago. Six, seven years ago, you've used it, enjoyed it. Yes. You've moved on, you've recycled it, and you're going home with £49. Happy? Okay. Yes, happy, yes. Not a bad deal. That's the real deal. <laughs> next, if Stuart fancies breakfast in bed, he just needs the next item. Oh, and a butler might be handy. And I know quite a lot about what you booked along, but do tell me about it yourself. Well, it was in a house when we moved in in 1986. Was it still uh, wired up? It was wired up. It worked once in the bathroom. Right. And then it didn't work again. Oh. Um, and I took it with me when I moved in 1990. Uh, these would have been the calls for the servants in the kitchen, all mm -hmm. the staff, and the house, the house generally would have a bell push in each room, let's say the drawing room, bedroom one, bedroom two, bathroom, front door, and you would ring and summon if you wanted assistance from the staff. And uh, the inside has got little tiny, I don't know whether you can see any of them, yeah, it might do just, mm -hmm. uh, little tiny flags that, yes. that flag up and swing for a while when, uh, when it's been activated. Um, this particular style was probably produced up until the mid-twenties, late-twenties, then they started changing style a bit, but still the same idea. Mm. Let's have a go at buying it. I like them. OK. 20, 40, 60. We've got three rooms. £70. Pounds. Sounds nice. Good. That's the word I like to hear. Do you have a deal at £70? Would you like to put a 20 instead of the 10? Would I? I suspect I would, actually, thinking about it. £80. Then yes, it's a okay. deal. We have a deal? Thank yes, you. Yes, we do. Thank you. Hello. Next, what will John make of this dapper little chap? You've brought along a very interesting little piece of porcelain here. Right through from the 17th, 18th, 19th century, there was this, it was called singerie. There's monkeys in pictures, monkeys in porcelain form, monkeys in all sorts of forms. This, I think, is German. But how did you come, come by it? Well, it was passed down to me from my mother, in fact, yeah. who, I understand, had it as a child in the... Um, 1880s, 1890s, oh, right, yes. something like that. Any idea where she might have got it from? Well, she told me it came from her mother. So it's, it's, it's kind of been passed down the generations. Right. Um, well, as you can see, it's a, it is a candlestick. It's what we call a taper stick, because it'd have a small candle, but it lights your way to bed upstairs, and then, because obviously, this makes it pre-electricity probably Sitzendorf, which is a factory that copied a lot of mice and things. Meissen was the oldest mm -hmm. factory starting in about 1720, and they were much copied. Anyway, 
Any idea of what you want to sell it for? Uh, no, but I think it's probably, as you say, it's interesting and so forth, which makes me think, in fact, it might be worth quite a bit. Well, here we go. See if I can tempt you. Right. Right. There's 20. 40 pounds. How does that, how does that seem? Oh, no, that's not... Uh... Can't be tempted at 40. No, I can't be tempted at 40, no. Right. Are we getting warm? The, getting... I, the ice has melted. The ice has melted, right. OK, well, here we go. How about 60 pounds? No, a little bit more, please. A little bit more? Yes. Mm. 70 pounds. Might we have a deal? Oh, well, just before here we say deal. we'll have a deal, I've put my two pennies in here. Let me tell you what the independent value will say, John, and the mm. auction is. 40 to 80. 70 pounds is on the table. I'm going to say that's a fair offer. It could bring a little bit more in auction, but remember, there would be a deduction of commission. So it's your choice. You can either gamble and go to auction or you can take the cash. I think, in this marketplace, 70 quid is quite a nice offer. OK. Well, I think that's probably a fair offer. It's... but... Uh... Well, OK. OK. Deal. I now own a monkey. <laughs> Maybe I'll start a zoo. Good luck with that, John. Coming up... Lovely. Well, I like this <laughs> and I'd like to buy it. And I'm well aware that it's an expensive item. So I hope I can impress you, Doug. Oh, I'm sure you will, eventually. I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. What has Simon set his sights on? Find out after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Have we saved the best till last? Simon's about to reveal all. Doug, you've brought in this very attractive box. If I open it, I think we can reveal to everybody what's inside. A beautiful silver-mounted toilet set in this lovely coromandel wood box. Yep. Please, can you tell me everything you know about it? Well, I think it dates from about 1858, and it was made in London, and all the, the boxes are engine-turned, and they're uh, uh, all made by the same silversmith, and they're all hallmarked up. It's got a nice Brahma lock on the, uh, uh, on the box there, and a selection of little tools, a pair of tweezers, all in mother of pearl, and there's a little pen knife there, a pair of scissors, something there, I don't know what that does. And, <laughs> and this is very interesting here, Simon. I don't know if you've seen one of these before. It looks like something to you put a curler on something. Almost looks it? like a drill bit or something, yes, doesn't it? Yeah, but in actual fact, you pull it apart and it turns into a little corkscrew. Oh, how sweet. Yeah. That, that is very unusual, actually. That's really you nice. You don't see too feature. many of those around, You do don't, yeah. absolutely not. That would appeal just to the uh, corkscrew The corkscrew, yes. And there yeah. are many of those yeah. wine buffs around. Yeah. yeah, And then there's a little tray underneath. That, yeah, I think uh, that's just here. We've, we've got a little drawer that out springs for, out. Uh, necklaces and chains. And, and also behind here, I think we'll find a mirror, won't we, if we There's a mirror, that. yes. Yeah. Right. And a, a retailer's label. And, uh, yeah, and it's just a, in very good order. It's in, I guess, what we would call fine retail condition. Yes. A yeah. beautiful Coromandel wood box. Um, mm. An unusual, sort of quite mm. exotic wood. Um, we've got this lovely sort of flash brass bounding around it as well. I think this is a lovely example of a Victorian um, toilet box. It's actually a nice size. I've had these before and they've been bigger, but this is beautifully mm. done. Um, very briefly, we can just take the lid off of this particular box and we'll see it's beautifully hallmarked here. As you said, I think, is it James Vickers? It's James by... Vickery. James Vickery, yeah. yeah. Mm. And, and you mentioned the date, 1850. 1858, yes. Yeah. So when you think about, you know, something over 150 years old now... It's done well to survive, It's it? done very well to survive. <laughs> I think, you know... So why are you selling it, Doug? Well, you know, I, it's one of those things that I've had in the house now for quite a while. And uh, although it's, it's very nice and collectible, I keep my cufflinks and bits and other pieces in the thing. Looking round, I think it's one of the things that I can manage to live without. Right, now we get to the, the financial oh, side. Oh, lovely. Well, I like this <laughs> and I'd like to buy it. So I hope I can impress you, Doug. Oh, I'm sure you will eventually. I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 pounds. I can see Mr Dickinson coming over. I think he might have something to say. Well, I have. <laughs> now, 
I don't know if this has been asked yet, Doug, but what did you pay for this when you bought it? Because it's a beautiful object. I paid a £1,000 for this. How many years ago? About ten years ago. Now, that doesn't surprise me, because ten years ago, a fitted box like this these were probably bringing 700, 800, 1,000 pounds. The marketplace has softened for this type of item, these toilet boxes. Nevertheless, this one is a bit of a bobby dazzler. Five to 700 pounds is where the independent valuers and the auctioneer are placing it. At 500 pounds, the offer is a realistic offer in today's marketplace. I believe that may have a chance at auction to do better. It is a gamble, but I believe it's worth more than that in today's market. Well, I, ha I haven't quite finished with Doug yet. <laughs> he always says that I haven't finished yet. We knew he was going to put more money on. I want to buy this, Doug. Yeah, we go. Another 100 makes it 600. Yes. Now, the auctioneer's estimate was five to seven. Yeah, but he knows it's, it's, uh, well, even if it made eight, you'd only end up with about seven after yeah. after well, commission. We'll make it up to eight, and we'll see you then. Six fifty. Um, I think it's sort of price in the trade is around eight hundred, which and I'd like to earn something on it. So go on, look, that's it, seven hundred pounds. Put another one on, and we'll call it a deal. I'm really struggling, you know. Yeah, well, I am struggling. Look, go on, I'll put £20 no, down. 720 Go on, please let me buy it for that. Tell you what, put me another 20 on and we'll call it a deal. What, 740 Yeah. Go on, Doug. 740 We got a deal? Go on, then. My pleasure. Thank you. Simon's very happy. Now, are all of our dealers smiling about a profit? Corey sold the dagger brooch for £110. Maybe I'll start a zoo. John decided against that and got £90 for the little monkey and £100 for the Austrian bronze. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Enjoy the money. I will. Simon only managed £780 on the vanity box. Take my money, John, before I change my mind. But with rising gold prices, got an impressive 690 for the gold watch and chain. Stuart also did well selling the scissors for £150 and the house bell system for £160. 